Hello. Welcome to episode 27 of the Compassion in Cucumbers podcast. I'm Christine. And I'm Sam. And this week uh, is brought to you by my cold, which I got <laughs> from our niece Lucy. <laughs> Thanks, Lucy. Shout out to Lucy for giving me a cold once again. I think last time I had a cold, I got it from Lucy. She's a walking Petri dish, as most younger people are. <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. I do think your last cold yeah. was from Lucy. Yeah, for some reason, I am susceptible to Lucy's germs. Huh. Nobody else seems to be susceptible to them. No, I fortunately have no sign of yeah. the cold, and we'll knock on some wood right there. But yeah. Um, yeah, you do seem to be a little bit more susceptible to Lucy germs. Yes. So, thanks, Lucy. Okay, so uh, this week in our cookbook challenge, um, I lost count of how many cookbook challenges we've done. We're this is episode twenty seven, so I think that this is like the eighth cookbook challenge. I or? I really don't know. I've lost track. Too. I've lost it. Somebody out there knows. If you've been keeping count at home, let me know. <laughs> I somehow I doubt that anybody's really keeping track. But if you have been keeping track, you know, shoot me an email so I can get back on the ball here. So this week, we I made, um, I say we, but I made it. Sam was at work. I was. But this week's recipe. I had recipe- nothing to do with making this <laughs> recipe. Nothing no. at all. This week's recipe was a Dan Dan noodle recipe, which mm-hmm. is one of my favorite dishes out of the Thug Kitchen 101 cookbook um, that was gifted to us by my sister shortly after we went vegan many years ago. So there's some controversy. Uh, we'll talk about that after we talk about the recipe, but let's, let's get well, into it. Actually, the... why don't we just deal with the controversy first and then we can go into the recipe. Okay. Would you like to talk a little bit about the controversy surrounding the Thug Kitchen brand that is no longer Thug Kitchen brand? That's right. They are no longer Thug Kitchen. They have since rebranded to Bad Manners, and um, subsequent editions of the cookbooks have been rebranded as the Bad Manners cookbook um, instead of Thug Kitchen. And that is because the authors of the book um, and creators of the brand, um, Matt Holloway and Michelle Davis, had come under some, had had gotten some backlash um, for their use of the word thug Mm -hmm. and for um, some of the writing within the cookbooks that they relied very heavily on uh, phrases that are specific to communities of people of color. And that, you know, as white people, uh, they were kind of putting on a a sort of digital blackface. Yeah, uh, they kind of hid their their identity, too, I guess. There's um, if you want to really deep dive into it, the Bearded Vegans did a two part um, series on the controversy surrounding Thug Kitchen. And it's episode 237 and 238 of the Bearded Vegans. And they're they're um, even though they're no longer podcasting. All of their episodes are still available. So at thebeardedvegans.com. Yeah. So if you want to uh, reach out to those episodes and really dig deep into um, how these people kind of carried themselves and mm-hmm. and kind of just hid who they were mm-hmm. and they're to kind of well-to-do white people. Yeah. Now, to be perfectly fair, when I first read the book, that's not what came to mind. For me. No, me neither. Not for an instant Um, did I think that they were trying to portray themselves as young black youth. No, I had no idea. Redundant. Well, that is redundant, but you know, hey, it works. Yeah. Um, No, I had no concept of who the authors were. There were no photos of the authors on the books. So I had no preconceived notion of who the author was. And I found the book to be um, irreverent for sure. And yes, profane at times. Yeah, they're, but they're pretty crass. If, you don't, if you're not crass. fond of swear words, there is some swearing in the recipe. I'm not hugely fond of swear words, but at the same time... Oh, I was saying that... Uh, well, now I can't remember what I was saying. <laughs> Shit. Oh, I was saying I wasn't fond of swear words. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> I wish we could keep that in. Well, I mean, I could I'd bleep out your swear word, but then uh, it wouldn't be as funny. No, it wouldn't. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I'm not a big fan of profane language and I still found it funny. And I think it's because of the context because yeah. I don't expect to find that kind of language in a cookbook. Right. 
And so just the way they were describing some of the dishes and the way they were describing certain ingredients and how simple it is to make certain things, I found it really entertaining. It is. I think it's entertaining, too. I think it's it's funny. Um, but I guess it's just because we're white. Yes. Not. It never occurred to me. I've also never really... Uh, made a deep dive into their blogs. I think it's m- a little more evident in the blog. Oh, in the old I've blog. I've never seen I don't know their if, blog. Yeah, I don't know if they've changed their food blog to remove all of that stuff. Probably since they rebranded. But mm. I never for a moment got that impression from the books. No, neither did I. But, you know, again, that's cultural differences. And, yeah. you know, we're kind of separated from that world right in a way i can't you know i can't and you can't say what is going to offend a black person heavens no yeah i i would i would never in a million years begin to say i know what should offend a person of color absolutely so not. i totally stand by anybody who thinks that that's what they were doing right and um I'll, I think go, it was, I'll go a step further i can't say what anybody else would be offended by yeah i guess that's true you know yeah. I, I might have an inkling of what you might be offended by just because you're my wife and I know you not reasonably much. well <laughs> and you're not offended by much. And I'm not. I'm not offended, offended by much. No, um, neither of us are, which I think is a really great thing. But that doesn't mean that other people should have the same responses to things. Right. Yeah. Or that they will have the same responses to things. And it's not to us to decide what's offensive and what is not. Right. We would not be good judges of that. No, because yeah, so they had the, so they had a major rebrand. Yes, to bad manners, right? Yes, to bad manners yeah. from Thug Kitchen. But we have the original books because they were gifted to us, and we decided not to dispose of them and then repurchase um, simply because of the title, yeah, and some of the language used. So um, we have the original Thug Kitchen cookbooks. Yeah, yeah. Um, in that article, it's a 2020 article in Plant Based News. Um, I do think that their response and their quote about the whole situation was a little bland and um, I don't know. I don't think it really said much. They, they quote, their quote was just, We apologize. We recognize we need to do better. <laughs> That's where they kind of left it. And if you listen to the Bearded Vegans episodes about this whole debacle, you'll find. Um, a lot of the reason why people were continually offended by these people is because they kind of kept making excuses as to why they didn't, um, just come out and say who they were. Right. That they just kind of, they hid who they were for a really long time Mm -hmm. and people were, you know, people would, were reaching out to them like, who are you? Who is the face of Thug Kitchen? Right. And they were really, you know. Um, Just not willing to give out that information. Right. And yes, I can see where that would feel disingenuous um, if you were to reach out to someone saying, hey, you know, I I love your work. Um, I'd love to know who you are. And the answer you get back is either deceptive or incredibly vague. Yeah, that would be that would be difficult to take, especially, you know, once you discovered that the author is not who... Maybe you thought they were. Yeah. Yeah. So I understand the controversy. Certainly. Um, but like Sam said, we weren't going to like pitch our cookbooks. We have two cookbooks by Thug Kitchen. Mm-hmm. Um, well, number one, because they were gifted to us. Right. By my lovely sister. And number two, it, we had already purchased them. It would be wasteful to throw them away. Anything else we want to say about the Thug Kitchen controversy? Um. Not about the controversy, no, but I would absolutely love to talk about some Dandan Dan noodles. Oh, oh yeah, the recipe. Let's talk about the recipe. Yeah, so important. Yeah, so Dandan uh, Dan noodles. If you're not familiar with Dandan Dan noodles, it's a popular street food. Uh, it's a Szechuan street food dish, which with noodles, of course. Of course. And a spicy sauce. Yes. And um, some sort of uh, textural element. This recipe called for tempeh. Um, I've had it where it was uh, bulgur, any kind of kind of textural kind of thing, and some veg. 
In our case, we had some bok choy and some cucumber, cucumber. and some green onion. Yep, that's what this recipe called for. Which was really delightful. It was. Um, and for those of you who are wondering, we did a little research into why Dan Dan noodles are called Dan Dan noodles. Yeah. Which neither of us knew until very, very recently. Yes. And the name refers to a carrying pole. So Dan Dan actually means carrying pole in Chinese. And when Dan Dan noodles are sold... Well, in the older in the old days, when Dan Dan noodles were sold as street food, the vendors would carry around these sticks with bags on either side, one side with the noodles and one side with the sauce. And so you would order your Dan Dan noodles and he would mix the two together. Um, but they were carried around in bags on a Dan Dan. Yeah. I thought that was pretty cool. This <laughs> is really cool. Yeah. I yeah. Like it. And uh, it's uh, it's usually an udon noodle dish. Yes, usually a thick noodle. Yeah. Yeah. It's my favorite dish at Planta Queen in Toronto. It's amazing. They make a really mean dandan dan noodle. They really do. Yeah. Yeah. It's phenomenal. But it's basically a peasant food, street food. Um, it's spicy. Mm-hmm. Which is good, but not too spicy. It's kind of the spice that kind of builds. Like, by the time you're done with the dish, you're like, ooh, spicy. <laughs> <laughs> But it's not so spicy that you have to, like, you know, stop eating it or whatever. Right. And for me, there's something about um, food that has, I think this is so funny because it is just not in my DNA at all. But spicy food is, like, comforting to me. Yeah. Like, curry and Dan Dan noodles and ramen and anything with like a spicy sauce to it anything yeah. where there's some heat i like the warming spice yeah it's different than like a mexican spice like a jalapeno spice a jalapeno mm -hmm. spice or even like um caribbean food yeah. where they use a lot of scotch bonnet and stuff it's mm -hmm. like boom in your face spice right whereas like the indian spices and szechuan spices they build they build it's, it's this kind yeah. of warmth that kind of builds it's not like doesn't numb your lips and your mouth mm -hmm. like immediately. It's, oh, it's it's just so nice. It's yeah. just definitely comfort food. I Indeed. Could, I, I could take a big bowl of Dan Dan noodles on a rainy day any day. <laughs> Does it have to be rainy? No, it doesn't have to, but it feels like rainy day food. You know yeah. how soup is kind of like a rainy day food? Yeah. Or, you know, sometimes just pasta in general feels like a rainy day food. Yeah. Because it's, you know... You, you want something warm and soothing on a rainy day. Yeah. Especially in, you know, spring. So. Yeah. Anyway, this was a really good recipe. Didn't take too long. Uh, not too many crazy ingredients. Nope. Um, I had just about everything on hand other than um, I had to get some baby bok choy. And the noodles. Uh, noodles. Yeah, we didn't we have. We didn't have udon. I mean, we might actually have udon noodles someplace else, but I wasn't sure. So I bought more udon noodles. Um, you could make this dish with other types of noodles too. You could use a uh, ramen noodle or, or a rice noodle or yeah. a soba noodle or yeah. anything like that. Yeah. But it's, I think though, with this kind of sauce, okay, because unlike ramen and a number of other noodle based dishes, uh -huh. uh, Dan Dan are not supposed to be soupy. Right. So, it's not a soup. Right. And so they're not supposed to be smothered in sauce. Or in broth. Uh, it's supposed to be, right. a, a, you know, the noodles need to really be a higher ratio to of the dish than, than the broth, broth yeah. or sauce. And um, so the thicker noodle, I think, accomplishes that really well. Because then when you mix up the noodles into the sauce, it's like the bigger, thicker udon noodles hold the sauce better than would... A thin noodle, like a rice noodle or yeah. a soba noodle or a ramen noodle. Yeah, they kind of soak up the sauce. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. It was really good. So I, you know, I would definitely make this recipe again. And I am really looking forward to Christine making this recipe again <laughs> or making it myself. Because I, I may not participate much in the creation of these recipes because um, I work. But Well, you're the official taster. I'm the official taster, but it's also just because I, 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 I work out of the house. Yeah. I am I am capable of cooking. Yeah, and <laughs> I am I in fact capable of cooking. We should uh venture into part of the series, I think we should venture into Sam making a couple of these dishes oh. on a weekend or something. Oh. Or making them together on a weekend. Or oh, you, wait, we summer did the, is um, approaching. We did the sushi together. We did do the sushi together, yes. Yeah. 
And summer is approaching. Yeah, and you'll, and you'll have more time. I'll have plenty of time in the summer. Yeah. To dive into the cookbook challenge. But yes. But for now, Christine's handling most of the cooking. And I don't mind because I really love cooking. Mm-hmm. And it's been so cool to watch you get so excited about recipes and because you're usually not a recipe person. Yeah, I mean, I, I like to wing it. I like to come up with my own thing. Mm-hmm. But it is you, you do get inspired by reading other people's recipes and making other people's recipes. For sure. There's a funny little blurb at the top of this recipe. It says, um, this tasty dish used to be peddled by street vendors to busy people back in the day. So it's basically OG f- tr- food truck grub. <laughs> Make this at home and get all the flavor without all the hipsters. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I thought that was cute. Well, there are no hipsters here, that's for sure. No, I am. Well, I don't know, unless it's hip to be square. Well, according to Huey Lewis. But we're kind of square. Yeah, we're pretty square. I don't know. I don't know. Are we? I don't know. It's all about it's all about perspective. I think if you have to ask if you're square, then you probably then are. <laughs> maybe. I don't know. Again, it's all perspective. You know. Yeah. Some people may think we're really cool. Well, I think we're really cool. I'm glad you think that. Yeah. And I happen to agree with you, E. Lewis. In some instances, it is hip to be square. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let, let let us not digress. <laughs> okay. We are digressing. And let's move on because I have some really interesting news about this whole coconut bliss, cosmic bliss thing that's going on. The uh, coconut kerfuffle. Yes, it's a kerfuffle indeed. Last week we talked about it and I'm sure you've heard a little bit about it that coconut bliss is now rebranded to cosmic bliss and is including a dairy ice cream line in their line of products. Yes. A vegan company. And everybody's up in arms about it. But guess what, everybody? Here's the thing. They're not a vegan company. They never were a vegan company. We were duped from the get-go by this company. Now, to be fair, because you know I'm always attempting to be fair. So so I, I have to do this. So I don't know. I cannot say for certain whether the original branding of Coconut Bliss was, which was not even Coconut Bliss. Before it was Coconut Bliss, it was Luna and Larry's. Right. Okay. And Luna and Larry's was started by Lockmead Dairy, a dairy farm in Oregon. Yeah. Let, let's say that again. Luna okay. and Larry's, beloved vegan brand that everybody's all up in arms about them adding dairy to their product line, was started by Lock a dairy, dairy company. By a dairy company. In yes. Oregon. A family dairy, a a large family-run dairy company in Oregon. Yes. So I cannot speak, and I don't think anybody can really speak to whether or not Luna and Larry's was marketed as a vegan brand purposefully, meaning that they were hiding that the company was actually owned by a dairy concern. I, I mean... I think it's one of those cases of lying by omission omission, Mm -hmm. that they never once, if they were so proud of this product, why wouldn't they say? Right. You know, I mean, Lock Me Dairy, apparently it's a regional thing on the West Coast. They're very well known. Mm -hmm. They have their own line of like convenience stores and all this Mm -hmm. other stuff. Um, Why, if they were so proud of the product, why would they not put their name on it? Right. You know, and why Why brand it as something else? Why brand it as something else? And the website that belonged to both Luna and Larry's and Coconut Bliss mentions nothing about Lockmead Dairy. Right. Yeah. So, um, but I I also want to give ourselves a little bit of a smack on the wrist because I remember I discovered Luna and Larry's when we first went vegan the very first time we went to Whole Foods mm-hmm. um, up in Buffalo. And I was like, okay, here we go. We're vegan. I need to try ice cream. Mm-hmm. And I found Luna and Larry's. And yes, I bought it under the assumption that it was coming from a vegan company. Yeah. I mean, granted, back then, most plant-based ice creams and vegan ice creams were only in a specific section. Right. They weren't integrated the way they are now. Right. So I don't know if that was purposeful that they I don't marketed it that way. Like, don't put us anywhere near the dairy ice cream. Make sure that we are 
Right. You that know, we're totally with the plant-based totally stuff. Totally with only the plant-based stuff. And the thing is, so at the time I was kind of like, well, gee, I would much rather buy ice cream from a, a small vegan company than right. to buy it from Ben and Jerry's. Right. As example. You yeah. Know, as an example. And so, um, and it, then it just turned out that their ice cream is fabulous. Like, you, yeah, you like you seem to like that. I, uh, they had a hazelnut or something. Well, thank you, somebody, for making a chocolate hazelnut yeah. ice cream to begin with. And then also their chocolate peanut butter was phenomenal. Yeah. Plenty of peanut butter. We've talked on this podcast before about yeah. peanut butter and chocolate peanut butter ice cream. And we have plenty of we, peanut yeah, butter. I think, in this I think multiple times. <laughs> yes. So <laughs> we're back to that. They had plenty of peanut butter in their chocolate peanut yeah, butter Yeah, but I don't cream. want to tout their brand anymore. No, um, no, no, no. I'm because just saying. I'm we were du- we were duped. Here. We were duped. I tell you, duped. <laughs> Go on. It, well, no, it's just I I don't like the word duped. That assumes evil intent. Um. All right. I feel duped. That's fair. How's that? Yes, you can feel duped all I you feel want. Feel like we were duped. I cannot say with certainty that we were purposefully duped. No, um, although, I don't know. Although they just, they never said, it doesn't say on the packaging anywhere, you know, buy Lockmead Dairy, you know, mm-hmm. um, and Lockmead Dairy sold a uh, majority to uh, Human Co. Yes. But they still own a minority, a minority share, share of the company. Yes, that is true. So, there so you go. for those of you who, like me, uh, thought Luna and Larry's, which then became Coconut Bliss, which is now Cosmic Bliss, if you thought they were a vegan organization or a vegan company, we were wrong. Right. They are not. They were never a vegan company. Yeah. So choose what you want to be mad about. <laughs> right. What Are you mad because they were never a vegan company and you feel like you were duped? Or are you mad because they were a vegan company and now they're offering animal-based products? Right. The way I look at it is, look. You don't have to be mad anymore at all, because guess what? They were run by a dairy company, so they were never in it for the animals in any way, shape, or form. Right. And so now, I mean, I know last week we kind of called for a boycott of Cosmic Bliss. I'm still calling for the boycott because of the greenwashing. The way the way they're well, marketing yes, these fair. products, the, the greenwashing is what really makes me angry. Yeah. You know, talking about sustainability and yeah. hum- humane... Humane yeah. and inclusivity, which I yeah. think is ridiculous. I mean, they're just, they're, it's just filled, all their statements are filled with these buzzwords. Mm-hmm. You know, they obviously have some marketing person. All right, here are the buzzwords you want to make sure that you sneak into this statement about your product change. Mm-hmm. And it's just green, it's greenwashing. Right. You know, there's nothing humane or sustainable about any dairy product. And we all know that. Yes. Well, I was just going to say, and I'm I'm going to agree with you on that because I had, as I was thinking, I was not taking the greenwashing into consideration. And yes, that's the part of this that bothers me the most as well. Um, but for me, I was thinking, huh, well, geez, I thought I was buying from a vegan company and now this vegan company is going to go towards dairy, so I'm not going to support them anymore. Right. But now knowing that they were never a vegan company, I feel less bad about buying their ice cream because... It might still be better than buying from Ben and Jerry's because we don't know where the milk is sourced. We don't for they're, any of for any of this. No, they're saying it's grass fed. Which who cares? Who cares? Grass fed cows it's, it's no are better. are still impregnated against their will. Their their babies are taken away from them so that that the dairies can use the milk. Their grass fed does not mean humane. No, or sustainable. No, actually, grass fed beef. And dairy is, is less, less sustainable. sustainable. And yeah, why why can't we find out where this milk is being sourced from? Right. It makes me suspicious. I'm suspicious, especially since Lock Me Dairy has a big hand in this whole uh, introducing dairy products to the line. Mm-hmm. So is the, is the milk coming from Lock Me Dairy? Lock Me Dairy is not a grass fed dairy farm. Right. They are a standard. Um, like like 800 head of cattle dairy farm. Yeah. So I don't know. More questions. Why can't, you know, I might reach out and see if I can find if they can tell us what dairies are sourcing their From milk. From what dairies they're sourcing yeah. their milk. Yeah. Yeah. And we'll uh, it's a great idea. report back on that. 
Yeah, we definitely will. So we will keep you updated on this story as it progresses, as I'm sure it will. Do we have anything else we wanted to talk about? Besides that breaking news? I feel like that's breaking news. Nobody else is talking about the fact that it that that company is run was started and is run by. Yeah, that does seem to have been dairy left out of a lot of the, you know, standard vegan media. Yeah, outlets. I mean, everybody's just crying uh, foul that a vegan company is introducing is introducing dairy. Yeah. Right. And not focusing on the fact that that company was never dairy to begin with. Was never vegan to begin with. Oh, I'm sorry. It was dairy. It was. It was not vegan. <laughs> Scratch that. We <laughs> rewind. They were never vegan to begin with. They were always run by a dairy company. Right. So there you go. Right. You heard it here first, folks. Um, I don't know how much more I can talk. Yeah. Without think, coughing into the microphone. Yeah. I think you're kind of at the end. So of... we're, yeah, we're going to cut this one a little short. I'll do some housekeeping. Sam's going to do a little housekeeping <laughs> while I edit better. out all the coughing sounds. Take yes. it away, Sam. Thank you very much. Okay. So uh, housekeeping for the week. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, uh, anything you'd like us to talk about on the podcast at any time, please email us at uh, compassionandcucumbers at gmail.com. You can also visit our website, uh, www.compassionandcucumbers.com. We are, as always, still running our fundraiser for the Mockingbird Farm Animal Sanctuary. And I would like to give a shout out to Lean On Me with Linda. Shout out. We got a $50 got donation. We got a $50 donation. From Linda Soto at Lean On Me with Linda. Yes. Yep. And she will have a t-shirt. And a copy and an of... an audio book coming her way. Yes, she will. And so we'll get that out to her as soon as it's humanly possible. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It means a lot. And that Donation, of course, will be matched and sent off to Mockingbird Farms. Um, also, if you would like to contribute to that fundraiser, please do so by heading to our Buy Me a Coffee page, which is www.buymeacoffee backslash cucumbers, and you can donate there. Um, what did Lucy decide? You could buy up to how many coffees? Oh uh, yeah, Lucy discovered you can buy up to fifty coffees at up a time. Up to fifty coffees yes. at a time. Now we're not asking anybody to no. buy us fifty coffees at five that's five dollars a, a pop. That's a bit much. So you know, but if you can buy us one coffee, you're not really buying it for us. You are buying it for the wonderful animals up at Mockingbird Farm. Yeah, and um, I would like to start a website in honor of Lucy. Uh, buy me some cough syrup at <laughs> buymesomecoughsyrup.com <laughs> backslash cucumber. <laughs> Just kidding. She'll appreciate that. Lucy is a regular listener of our podcast, so she'll yep. appreciate that. She's one of our biggest fans. Yeah, she is. Not that she's, uh, you know, is that biased or anything. I'm pretty sure it is. All right. Well, I hope everybody has a fantastic week. I'm sure I'll be sounding and feeling much better in next week's episode. Yeah. Thank you so much for listening and for putting up with me sniffling and whatnot into the microphone i've tried to control most of it <laughs> um and we'll see you next tuesday we sure will have a great week everyone thank you Bye bye if you'd like to support the compassion and cucumbers podcast you can go to buymeacoffee.com backslash cucumbers and buy us a cup of coffee Thanks so much for listening and for supporting us in what we're doing. We're really having a good time with it.